up after Laurent's talk about, you know, the good quality peer review and how much time it involves. Now, the next, uh, the last speaker of today's session will be Tom Khalif, the marketing director of Pablons. And he will be speaking about getting a formal recognition for all the peer review efforts that we, all researchers, peer reviewers are doing. So, welcome. Thanks so much. Um, first of all, thank you very much uh, to the Cambridge staff for having me along. It's always a pleasure to come up here. Um, and hello, everybody. My name is Tom. I'm from Publons. Um, quick question, who has heard of Publons and knows what we do? OK. All right. Hopefully, by the end of this, uh, the rest of you know a little bit more about what we do. And uh, the people who are familiar with us, hopefully, have learned something as well. Um, so today, I want to talk about a couple of things. The first is what I call the skewed system of scholarly communication, and I'm particularly referring to the incentives when I talk about that uh, with regard to publishing and peer review. After that, the role of recognizing peer review, uh, given the important role that it plays, giving it adequate recognition to try and bring some balance back to that system. Uh, we're going to touch on the Publons Academy, which is a new training course that uh, we're about to launch. Uh, and then we'll take some questions at the end. So, yeah, there we go. Um, peer review is at the heart of research, and this is commonly known. Everyone in the research enterprise will tell you this. Uh, and but the interesting thing that I'll, I'll get onto in the next slide, in fact, is, is how we talk the talk, but we don't really walk the walk in a lot of respects. Um, now, I'm not a researcher myself. I actually have a policy background. I come from government uh, legislative reform. And one of the key things that uh, you look for when you want to intervene in a market or a system as a, as a policy person um, is market failure or system failure. And quite often what you come back to and find as a, as a uh, common root cause of market failure or system failure will be uh, skewed incentives or things that are driving people to act in inappropriate ways or do things for uh, outcomes that are undesirable. So in terms of being a researcher, it's really interesting because if you leave teaching aside, there's kind of two functions as a researcher. Now, it's a really oversimplified, an oversimplified way of, of describing it, but bear with me for the argument. You're there to publish and conduct novel research, try and drive your field forward by uh, conducting novel research. The other is to interpret the research of others. And these two things are really interdependent. And the role of peer review is obviously cemented in interpreting the work of others. And that role is critical because it helps us to uh, bring trust and integrity to the published literature. I write a bunch of blogs uh, for my role at Publons. And one key thing that would separate your you know, uh, vetted, trusted findings driving research forward for my blog is the fact that it's been through the rigors of peer review. And I think that's increasingly important given uh, increasing distrust in media and science, as we're seeing in some parts of the world. So, as I said, a lot of people will um, tell you that peer review is actually at the heart of research. It is the gold standard uh, in terms of a quality assurance mechanism for published literature. Uh, there's been many surveys telling you this, and the research enterprise will tell you this, but the interesting thing is that the way we treat peer review is completely out of whack. So, it's the very pillar uh, of what's holding together trust and integrity in research, but you wouldn't really know it. And in terms of how we incentivize what a researcher does, it's really strange because there's massive pressure to publish. All the incentives drive you to publish almost at any cost. But there's very little incentive to review. And what I mean by this is you're rewarded as a researcher through career progression, funding, all of these very real rewards that help you drive research forward and individually progress your career based on your publication record and your citation record for the most part. Yet at the same time, the thing that allows society and the research enterprise to trust published literature and drive science and research forward is the peer review process. And we rely on the same people, you, the experts, to carry out this peer review process. And yet the only reward or incentive to do that is kind of a quid pro quo type arrangement you're expected to peer review because other people will peer review your work, or it's a service to your community. 
And I'm not saying those are, are, are invalid reasons. They're perfectly valid reasons. The problem is they're put up against the very real rewards of publishing at almost any cost. And this contributes to some of the problems that we see uh, in, in scholarly communication. There's a few uh, that I've marked up there. So, for example, we're pushing research out as quickly as we can. Sometimes it's not getting the quite uh, rigorous quality assurance uh, vetting that it should. And you get things like the reproducibility crisis. Or salami slicing of research. And this is actually where the name Publons come from. comes from. It's the idea that you will split a piece of research into as many publishable units as possible, so you get as many citations as possible. Uh, you get increasing rejections um, and research misconduct and fraud. All coming about because we're fostering, fostering this environment where uh, it's in, kind of encouraging people who might be teetering on the edge of considering doing these things to go over the edge. On the other side of it, with minimal incentive to review, uh, we've got a slow review process. Uh, we survey editors all the time, and they tell us over and over again, the number one problem is finding willing, motivated reviewers. It can take up to 180 days uh, on average for some review processes to take place. And I, I don't think if you want to publish your research, you want half a year going by uh, just to go through the peer review process. Um, there's also, as a reviewer, you get reviewer fatigue because we've got this pool of reviewers who are um, over and over again being asked to review uh, by the same people. We don't have an expanding pool of expert reviewers because of these lack of incentives. And that creates this imbalance in the system. So to take a snapshot of exactly what is involved in peer review at the moment, this I think is actually two or three years old now, um, but every year you've got roughly four million reviewers conducting seven million reviews over about 35 million hours worth of work. And uh, it was a, a scholarly kitchen blog a couple of years ago that tried to, tried to quantify this in monetary terms, around about two and a half billion dollars of unrecognized peer review work each year. Um, so, you know, it's a really critical part of what we do to bring trust and integrity to science and research. A lot of you people are doing it, and yet, and, and this is the scope of the work, the scale of it, uh, yet there's no recognition and, and a very uh, skewed system of incentives for doing it. So that's why Publons was founded uh, back in 2013 by a couple of Kiwi guys uh, who have since uh, expanded out to, uh, we're based in London now as well. And our mission is to speed up research by harnessing the true power of peer review. And what I mean by that is both speeding up the peer review process, so we've got more willing, motivated, capable reviewers to select from so editors can find them, get review done, push research out faster, but also by Engaging people in the process of interpreting each other's work so you can add context and insight to published work and help drive uh, research forward. So how do we do that? Some of the features and functionality of what Publons is. Essentially what we do uh, at the core is we allow you to keep a, a verified track record of every single review you perform for any of the world's journals. And it's one centralized place to keep all of this information and uh, rather than having it fragmented, because uh, traditionally, you know, journals or publishers might provide you with a certificate or an acknowledgement, publish your name in a journal at the end of the year, but it's very fragmented. So what we're doing is providing one simple place, centralized place, for you to keep all of that information and then use it so we can build a platform of recognition and start making this a measurable, out measurable output. So then using that measurable output, we can start giving it due reward. So here's a, an example of a profile, that's Jonas Randstam, the most prolific reviewer last year, did something like 800 or so reviews. He's a semi-retired uh, medical statistician, so it's basically all he does. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about the profiles later, but it's a free service, and that's essentially the core of it. Track your peer review work. You can also track your editorial work if you're a handling editor. You can track uh, a verified record of every single manuscript you handle your journals. How do you add reviews? There are two ways. You can either manually add them, um, either by going onto the site and entering the content of a review. We will then uh, go and verify it behind the scenes with the editor. You can forward the thank you for reviewing emails and editor will send you after you've performed a review and just simply forward that on to reviews at Publons. We'll add it to your profile. Or uh, increasingly, we are partnering with publishers. So when you perform the review, there will be a box at the bottom of the uh, review form and you just check that box, please automatically add this review to my Publons profile. All gets done, tick of a box, 
and uh, we've got about a thousand odd journals uh, or so that are formally integrated now. Many more to come this year as well as we continue to partner with publishers. Uh, the reason we do that is because we're aware of uh, the administrative burden, a million different profiles, a million different things to take care of. We want to make this automatic as possible to provide a useful service uh, with very little uh, administrative burden. So here's what a profile looks like uh, up close. You can see the green ticks alongside the pre-publication reviews there that shows that those are verified reviews. And here's a little bit of a range of the different types of uh, review display settings that you can choose from. So at the very basic level, and the default setting is you only show, we will only ever show the name of the journal review, reviewed for, the year of the review, um, and verify the review. You can choose uh, yourself whether you want to be able to sign your name to the manuscript you reviewed or publish the content of your review as well. Uh, but what we do is we take into account your preferences alongside the journal and publisher preferences which they set. And if everything aligns and everyone wants to publish or sign names to reviews, then that will occur. And you can see that with a couple of the reviews there. Um, these ones. Alternatively, if the publisher or journal does not allow that and their settings restrict you uh, because their policy for review is, is uh, you know, blinded or they don't want content to be published, uh, then it'll only ever be uh, the, the name of the journal in the year. So the publisher or journal settings take precedence is the point. <clears throat> oh, there's also post-publication reviews. So any article that has been published, you can import it uh, using DOI and go into PubLons and write post-publication reviews and drive up your PubLons merit score, which is kind of the score that indicates how much uh, review work you've done. Um, and you can read that. And, and it's a great place because we're now building this network of expert reviewers. You can track their credentials all in one place and you can go there onto PubLons and see what they have to say about published research. And we think that's really cool because rather than any sort of anonymous comment in a myriad of places, you can actually go to one place, see the experts and what they have to say about published research. The other thing to note here is that we will never ever publish the content of a review, even if everybody has um, permitted for you to publish the content until the manuscript has been published. So at the moment, we're sitting at about 130,000 odd reviewers, uh, about 690,000 odd reviews on the platform, 5,000 or so editors using the site, and there's a selection of the publishers that we partner with at present. Some other features, so you can get direct feedback from the editor. Um, they can score your review uh, across four different uh, the word I'm looking for, uh, parameters there. Um, and if it meets a score of, I think it's eight or higher, have we got the, I don't have 16, 12 or, or higher out of 16, uh, then you would get an excellent review. And an excellent review shows up on your profile with a little gold star next to it there, as we see on Yahoo's profile. So there's a great way to get direct confidential feedback about uh, your review performance from editors, and if you have uh, performed outstandingly, then we will acknowledge that for additional recognition, showing that you're an excellent reviewer in those, circumstances, in those situations. Another feature, you can help the world better understand research through post-publication reviews, scoring articles, and adding comments. Uh, there's an example of a uh, paper that has a, a number of post-publication reviews on it on PubLons, and some of the metrics we show alongside that. So, uh, some people have gone on, reviewed the paper, and then scored it for quality and significance. We surface the altmetric score, and then there's also the PubLons score alongside it. Uh, you can browse thousands of post-publication reviews on PubLons already. You can filter them uh, to surface them based on their score, how popular they are, how many reviews, those sorts of things. Uh, and we also provide you with exclusive statistics into your own reviewing history and behavior. Uh, this is either for you to choose to make public or keep for yourself. So we do things like average word counts, the average impact factor of reviews you, uh, um, of journals you review for, sorry, reviews you perform over time, uh, your publication to review ratio, uh, the acceptance rate, so how often papers you review go on, on to be published. And all of this uh, can help provide some context for your performance to create a benchmark. So when you go and you want to include your review record in any type of performance evaluation or you want to go and try and get a fellowship or whatever it is, uh, then there's some norms that you can compare yourself with everybody else in terms of your performance of reviewing. Again, you can keep this completely private if you like. 
Uh, you can sync all of this with your ORCID account. So go in, tick a box, and your review history will automatically be synced with your ORCID account so you don't have to copy things over if you want to print off your ORCID profile with all of your publications and everything like that. All of your verified reviews will appear on your ORCID account simply with the tick of a box. You can also volunteer to review for your favorite journals. So all of our partner journals, uh, they will have the option to click and let them know you want to review for them. This helps them to find your expertise so they can get review done better and faster. Uh, so you just go onto the uh, platform, search for the journal, and then offer to review for them. So this is all well and good. You can start tracking your review and editorial history. Uh, what good is it? How is this actually going to help rebalance the system? So you can download your uh, exportable peer review record and use that uh, in a number of places to actually help uh, improve your, uh, the evidence you have of your standing and influence in your field. A lot of people don't realize, but the fact that uh, people haven't, don't know that uh, peer review is a quality indicator of your expertise or standing in your field is because there hasn't been any uh, good way to show the evidence of it to date. Now that you've got it all in one place, it's not fragmented, you've got evidence, uh, there's some context to it in terms of where you rank in your field, you can actually use these things in a number of places already. And we know this because we've gone out and we've asked around and we've done the research to see where it is useful. Individual evaluations, promotion, job, tenure. You can help uh, your visa applications if you want to go and uh, be a researcher overseas and continue in professional development. Here's a quote from uh, Randy Schickman showing that, in fact, if you want to become a part of an editorial board, they'll often look at their experience with you as a reviewer. Uh, again, someone... Uh, Professor Alan Stitt, who has uh, just recently gone through the tenure round at his university, um, said that he saw a bunch of uh, Publons review records included in the latest tenure round, and it was really, really helpful for them to be able to uh, uh, acknowledge and have evidence of the peer review history of these people. Um, it can also help your institution raise its profile as a center of research excellence. We have an institutional leaderboard where we show uh, the peer review performance of that institution. Most importantly, this is all great for research as well. Like I said, there's this huge incentive imbalance in the system. And if we can start from the bottom up, uh, putting to the decision makers, the people who hold the purse strings, make decisions about career progression, the fact that this is an important academic output from researchers, then they can start uh, to actually give more formal weighting to these things, whether it's in uh, giving out funding or making those decisions about tenure or fellowships or whatever it is, uh, then you can start to show that uh, I've got this evidence of my service and impact and standing in my field through my, through my review history, uh, so give it greater weighting in those decisions. If we build this platform of recognition, uh, then we're also hopeful that we can start to improve the quality and the efficiency of the peer review process, get better research out faster, and on top of that, you can start looking at things like openness and peer review. Um, which is really interesting actually. Yesterday I think I saw Elsevier uh, announcing over the next three years a phase out of completely open peer review processes for all their journals. Just so let me check that out. And that hopefully is going to start to rebalance the system in terms of what we need to have a well-functioning scholarly communication system with lots of great novel research being conducted but also a very rigorous uh, peer review process done by the experts who are qualified to do it. Um, Finishing off, so the Publons Academy, you might be wondering, well, how do I become a reviewer? Uh, uh, often the way that editors find reviewers is they look for people who have published papers, first authors, things like that. Um, how do I break in? How do I actually start contributing as a reviewer? Uh, so for many early career researchers, they want to do this, simply haven't been asked. For editors, they say that they can't find them, um, and it's actually the hardest part of their job. So there's a disconnect there. And the problem that is causing this disconnect for a lot of the time is that not only the discoverability problem, but also how do you prove that you're competent to an editor? They want to know that they're getting a reviewer that is going to be able to do the job rather than come back and they have to go and get another review done because it wasn't quite up to standard. So what we've decided to do is create an online training course and then use our platform to be able to put people through the training course, learn how to become a competent reviewer, working with your very own supervisor who can then assess your reviews and endorse you formally on Publons and use all of that to then connect you with the editors who are on, on Publons as well, showing that you are competent and endorsed by your supervisor and ready to review. 
So we cover the full stack, training you how to review from the world's best experts who have helped, helped us to design the course, building your profile out on Publons to show that you're competent and ready to review, and then actually connecting you with the editors at Pop Journals who need to find reviewers. So that's the Publons Academy. Graduates will understand how the process works. They'll actually practice reviewing real papers in their field on Publons as post-publication reviews that they practice. They'll be endorsed by your very own supervisor, and then you connect with editors. And it's been designed by experts from across the research enterprise. Building your profile from that to that, and then impressing and connecting with top editors all around the world. Uh, so recap, system is out of whack. Publish at all costs, review out of goodwill, and that's fueling bad outcomes. But if we give review the recognition it deserves, we can help bring balance back to the system, get better, more reliable research out faster. And we think early career researchers are the future, so we need to help them show their reviewing expertise and connect with top editors. Questions? Uh, th thank you very much for your talk, um, Lauren Gatter from the University of Cambridge. I have two questions. One, um, hopefully it will be very short. Do you have any competing interests to disclose? So are you linked, financed, owned by a commercial publishers, for example? Not owned by, no. So uh, we have uh, had an investment from Sage, but it is at arm's length. Oh, excuse me. So uh, absolutely nothing to do with the control of the company okay. whatsoever. I, th I think that's great because we know publishers, commercial publishers want to take control not only of the publishing, but many, many more aspects. And, and I think that is a, a threat. Mm -hmm. and I like ownership of it. I think we need to, to remain in that. Uh, my second question was, um, so I, I would be in a position to advertise myself, even to get in touch with journals saying I'd like to advertise for you. Mm -hmm. Can I also uh, make it explicit that I'm willing to review for any journals, but I want to um, review for ethical publishers. So say that I want only to publish to review for papers that are of open access journals or mm -hmm. papers that will be open access. So can I kind of promote my view of open science uh, through problems? Yeah, I think than just saying, yeah. okay, at the end of the day, you can get it for papers that were open and all. Right. I think there'd be a couple of ways you could do that on Publons. One would be you make it explicit on your profile. So we have a reviewer finder tool uh, on the publisher side of the product, and they go through, they find reviewers for papers, and then they would be able to invite you through the platform to review, and they would look, be looking at your profile. That's where they go to contact you. So right there, you could make it plain. Uh, you know, I only want to review for open access journals. The other way, would, when you in register your interest to review for certain journals, you could go through and, and just simply register your interest for the journals that you think align with your views. Uh, and then finally, I guess, another way to do it would be to start uh, you know, going on to Publons or even other places as well and just making it plain and clear through things like post-publication reviews, commentary of research, things like that, uh, where your views stand trying to push forward that agenda. Thank you. Thanks. I think this is a great initiative and um, it's just too bad that actually problems is so new, so that many reviews already been done in the past, um, you know, cannot be, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, normal way. Okay. So, ba but so my question is basically, how can I um, add without much effort uh, the reviews that have been done in the past to the profile? Yeah. And yeah, perhaps that's it. Cool. One. Um, so two things to say here. One. Um, very simple way to add any reviews that you may still have the thank you for reviewing email for in any. So not always easy because people don't keep all of these emails. So that's one thing. If you do search your inbox, find anything, thank you for reviewing, forward those on. That's quite quick and easy if they are there. The second thing is we've actually just developed a way to work with our publisher partners to upload any historic reviews. So we can go back as far as their records would allow in most instances, and we're trying this with two publishers at the moment, to then upload for any of our existing users, all of their historical review data. Hi, I have a question. You mentioned Elsevier and open peer review. Can you explain that? I think I may have misheard what you said. Yeah, so um, there's a research information article that came out yesterday uh, 
uh, and part of that was an interview with, I forget who, maybe the managing director of publishing, something at Elsevier. Now, I'm not totally sure of this, um, I'm just repeating what was reported in that article, but um, it was said that over the next three years they would be rolling out open peer review across all of their journals, um, which was very surprising to me. And I don't know exactly what they mean by open peer review, I know they've been doing a pilot in recent years. Yeah, so uh, look into it though, really interesting. Uh, research information, 